Hey guys, welcome back to How to Build Your Layout from Start to Finish. Today we're talking about wrapping up your wiring, uh, doing the finishing touches, making sure your wiring work, uh, works correctly, all that hard work that you've done pays off. And also, uh, we're going to talk about operation and testing out uh, shorts. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, wiring diagram that I beat you guys to death with. Now, we, in review, we have done the terminal joiners and wired them to the barrier strips. We've put the jumpers in, and we've done the bus wiring that uh, makes your electrical signal travel all the way around your layout. Now what we're uh, focusing on is how to take all of this wire and concentrate it down to this last barrier strip and then directly to your DCC controller. So let's take a look directly under the table and see how this is done. What we have here is the barrier strip that is right before your DCC controller. Now this barrier strip is going to have the wires going the wires going from it are going to the DCC controller. The wires going from it in this direction here are going to this last barrier strip here which is the last one on your module and the other one is going to the barrier strip over here which is the last one on that module. Now keep in mind you have to keep your track separated. So the black wire is the inner track, yellow wire is the outer track. So I've got black connected to each other so that this module here is connected with this module here. I've got the black also going from this module to this last barrier strip and then onto the DCC controller the yellow doing the exact same thing, connecting the two modules and going to the DCC controller. So, like I've said before, all those modules are now interconnected with the bus lines and it's feeding directly here to up and around the DCC controller. Now, in my case I have the MRC Prodigy Advanced Squared uh, it's simple enough for me to operate. It's got a large screen. There's lots of reasons why I'm using it. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because it doesn't have JMRA and things like that. But uh, that's what I've decided to use. But now comes the moment of truth. We're going to power this on, see if it works. So we're going to put in Loco 8321. I highly suggest when you guys are testing out your layouts for the first time, the track laying, the electrical work, Pick a locomotive that's very picky and requires a lot of uh, juice to it at all times. For example, smaller engines that are just DCC, things like that. If you do something like that, it will uh, be able to pick up whether you're getting power to your tracks better. Also, um, you want really crappy cars, like the worst cars you can think of that derail a lot because if they don't derail, then you know you've done your job somewhat correctly. So I have chosen on that the auto racks and the auto racks are the worst cars I have in my inventory. They derail like crazy. I've already had to take two out because they aren't engaged. Uh, so, and, I, and those are just two I checked. I don't even know if these others are engaged, but they are just derail nuts. Uh, they derail all the time. So let's go ahead and see if we have power. And the engine starts up, so that's a good sign. Now, once that engine starts up, it pretty much tells you things are good, but I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure the lights are working, which they are. I have bell. I have horn. Just stuff like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start this train moving through the double crossover here. Now, a lot of people said I'd have problems on the double crossover. So, I'm going to start it moving through the double crossover and then get it up to speed with these... Uh, really bad auto racks that derail like crazy. Let's see how it handles. I am now up to 126 speed steps, which is maxed out uh, on my DCC controller here. I'm on the outer loop, and we're at full play. Full power. So 
it comes through the uh, double crossover nicely going straight. Now what we're going to do is run them through onto the other track. So what I need to do here is I haven't installed switches yet, so I'm going to switch the rails manually. to go onto the other track. Now a lot of discussion about this double crossover not allowing for the cars to transition from one to the other. Um, first of all, with a double crossover, prototypically, trains aren't flying through double crossovers. They're limited to anywhere from 15 to 40 miles an hour on a double crossover. Right now I've got this MTH engine at 36 miles an hour, or 36 speed steps. And it's now crossing through the double crossover here. And there it is. It's through the double crossover. Uh, that's about the prototypical speed, max speed that it would go through a double crossover, so that's good to go. Now we have another uh, test we've got to run. This test will determine whether or not you have uh, overload capabilities. Now basically what that is, is you don't want your uh, DCC engine to fry if there's too much power going to it or some spark or something. So what your DCC controller should do is go into overload uh, mode if there's some sort of connection wrong, if wires are touching each other, that way you're not doing any damage to your engines, you're not burning up wires, things like that. Now, mom and dad always told you don't put coins on the railroad tracks. But in this case, on these HO scale railroad tracks, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, you should, to, to save time, we're only going to do this on one section, but you should go around every module that you have a power uh, source going to or terminal joiners and check to make sure that your overload is working. What you do is you put the coin onto the track to where it's uh, bridging the connection between the left rail and the right rail. Now what you do is you turn on your DCC controller and you should get something like that where my DCC controller says overload. That's because the, the um, two polarities are connected and they're basically uh, causing a short. Now if it doesn't do that when this coin is on the track then you have the potential to run into situations where if wires are touching each other they're reverse polarity, you can have wires burnt, you can have engines fried, things like that you don't want. So it's really important to do this this test and make sure it works. And don't keep it on there for too long because it's it's not really good for your controller. And it actually warms up the coin a little bit. So I would do this all the way around and that wraps up our tests. As you could probably guess, I've uh, already, before I did this video, I was aware that my wiring was successful. I've taken some of the most fickle engines I have and ran them on this uh, layout without any problems. I've also taken these auto racks and ran them frontwards and backwards at pretty decent speeds through the double crossover without any problems. So that tells me that that slight S curve that a lot of you guys were worried about is going to be okay because these really bad, super easy to derail cars are going through no problem uh, frontwards and backwards, then I should be good on my other cars. Alright, so that's it for this uh, wiring segment. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to email you this uh, wiring diagram if you need more help. Uh, just send me your email address and YouTube's email. And also, uh, don't think we're out of the woods yet. Yes, we're done with wiring. Yes, this layout is now operational, but we will be going into uh, how to do scenery and things like that way down the road. You're not going to get a video every week or every few days like you have been, but down the road we will be doing a scenery, going into scenery, and as you, as you can see here, uh, sorry I'm a little tired, I haven't been drinking. As you can see here, I've already done a little bit of scenery with this bridge. Uh, I just put the bridge in, uh, made it to where the track is level. I know a lot of you guys that are really super detailed are going to say, why is there concrete ties running across the bridge? Don't worry, I will be switching them out. I haven't glued those down with some bridge uh, track, and which will have wooden ties and have that little thing inside that helps protect the, the consist staying on the track while it's going across the bridge. That will be installed later. 
I'll also be installing a yard later here, starting here that'll go straight down. I haven't decided whether it's going to be an, a siding where it'll have an entrance and exit point, or just a parking area where it'll just have an entrance point and little end uh, modules or end stubs at the end where the cars will park. But that's future projects for this layout, and like I said, detailing uh, and scenery will come later. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all your guys' uh, comments and emails. It's nice to know that I'm helping you guys out somewhat, and I'm, I'll try to be there on email to help you out too. See you next time.